uh, that's where you get your. Uh, the, it's very rewarding to 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 have the chance to screen it to different people in different countries and to get different reactions as well. Mm -hmm. So um, and then you're. I've I, I've uh, I've always hoped that uh, I'm doing sort of very in a way very personal films, mm -hmm. but uh, I, I've always believed that the more personal and precise and and uh, where you put something out of you with honesty, there's more chance that you might reach, reach a larger public. Uh, not, a, not necessarily a larger public, but you might, you might touch the people who sees the film in maybe in a deeper way than, mm -hmm. than normal, um, because then they can identify themselves to mm -hmm. what's going on in the film. And, and so, um, of course, you can also always, you will always you know, leave people, some people indifferent, that's, 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 it's, then it becomes just a question of sensibilities, of different sensibilities right. of, of people. But, uh, but then if, when you realize that, um, that your film has a kind of, a, as an echo in, in, uh, for people uh, in different parts of the world, um, that's, that's very, that's very nice. And it's, it, it gives a kind of uh, meaning to mm -hmm. what I do. It's, it's this idea of doing very personal films, um, how does that, tell me about your journey in coming from, in, in deciding to do fiction now and how that has changed this idea of like what is personal to you, <coughs> the sort of material that you want to deal with um, as opposed to non-fiction. Yeah, when I was doing documentaries, I... Um I was uh, also I did my documentaries. We have to be honest, uh, really like in the dark because uh, I, I I was not like uh, I, I was really not like being noticed there uh, outside of Quebec actually, mm -hmm. um, and um, so then I uh, but I was really interested as a as a I I started to do documentaries in in instead of doing short films. It was for me like a. Um, a, a cheap way to start doing feature films ah, okay. right so away. It was, that's what I meant, like it was a way towards getting... The, the ultimate goal was to okay. reach that uh, dream okay. that I have for since I'm a kid to do fiction film. Okay. Because um, it's interesting because it sounded as if, because maybe you, if you're doing documentaries because that's what you wanted to do and then you felt that the form itself was no. lacking in a way of expressing this personal meaning no I, I was always a bit frustrated in documentaries not only because it didn't pay and uh, I was kept <laughs> in the dark but also um, but also because I uh, there was there's a bit there's a writing uh, a writer inside of me also that, that wasn't satisfied so of course you you write in the editing suite and it's sure. very uh, it, it, it can be very very stimulating when you're doing docs but but then I uh, I was missing the thing that uh, here I have this thing to tell and and I I really like writing. It's um, mm -hmm. for me for me writing is the best part with editing. It's like uh, uh, it's like it's like where you really have this sense of uh, I don't know like uh, authorship in a way or sure. and um, you're in your bubble and uh, in the editing also I'm in. The bubble with my editor, which but I've been working with him for the, the same editor, Mathieu Bouchamalo, for so many years that we're like brothers. Mm -hmm. you know? And um, so it's um, and then I was when I was document, doing documentaries, I was uh, choosing uh, subjects sometimes by just uh, it was random, uh, but but because somebody says that the first, I mean the first documentary I did was somebody who, who like saying, why don't you come with me and uh, let's go in Paris and let's do a film about this uh, sociologist. And uh, it, was, mm -hmm. it was another uh, sociologist who was uh, proposing me that. And, and so I ended up in Paris with, during the riots of 2005 and 2006. And, I, and it was like, uh, yeah, it was, I was discovering a new world. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I started to do like, um, it, it, it was also that notion of uh, discovery. And... Um, and uh, and then I was also attracted towards subjects that I was sometimes very afraid of. I, I did a film in a hospital, and um, that's the one. I'll, that that's actually my my breakthrough films in yeah. documentary filmmaking in, in Canada. It's called the uh, Secure Kiba, the, this this heart mm -hmm. that beats, and um, 
And then I was, that was like, uh, I was shooting in the hospital because I, I was, uh, I've been always an hypochondriac and <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid of dying, you know, constantly. So it's, I mean, it's, part, of <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's part of a, a neurosis I have. So, so I, I was kind of trying to face that demon and mm -hmm. uh, to let's go in this uh, very, very like uh, unattractive uh, place right. for me, which is an hospital. Okay. And then I realized that it was surprisingly full of life, you mm -hmm. know. And um, it was a theater of life. It was you were, it was a bal Balzacian, uh, Balzacian also like um, a comedy of life in, yeah. in, in in a way. You know, it was unbelievable. Not and unlike the school, which is another um, environment absolutely. that comes back yeah. in your yeah. in your fiction. Yeah, and, and then and then ironically, when I start, when I had a chance to do a first uh, feature film. Um, I wanted to, I turned a, a, a bit the camera in, towards my direction mm -hmm. and say, well, it, it, it falls into a stereotype, but it was, The Demons was really the film that I did uh, that is like the, you know, like the first, the, when we say like a lot of people are doing the, the first films there is always autobiographical. Yeah. That was actually the case completely. Mm -hmm. It was about my childhood mm -hmm. and I was facing like then the demons of my childhood yeah. and children fears and and then there's a bit, and then there's a bridge between also that film. Because and, you you've also sp uh, spoken about the personal autobiographical elements in this one in Genesis. Yeah. With, but I, I assume that's more of a construct. Like you you were <coughs> more focused on yourself in the demons, and now while still using elements, you are you distance yourself. A I, bit more. I I distanced myself a, a, a little bit more, even though there's parts of it that are very taken from real, real, real stuff mm -hmm. from life. And uh, because the the thing is that when you're writing, also when you're trying to imagine a scene, you realize also that when you take it, when you take the scene from reality, that's something that you experience or that you witnessed. It's always more original and special, and mm -hmm. or it's there's something very like peculiar also and when 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 you're taking something out of the real life it's it's it everything is there already yeah. um and it's it, it 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 makes more authentic scenes than if you're trying to imagine stuff you know i i and it, and, and then of course it's con it's a construction like you yeah. say so you're it's a mix of using your imagination and putting it in, put it in also into a, a certain kind of dramatic form and and in, in that sense, I think that the film is, uh, is, is structured. We can come to the end. The end is out of the out of the box. But uh, I mean, the the whole film is structured in in, in a kind of you know yeah. uh, classical way in, in, in a way you know. Yeah. And it, this thing that you 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 talk about the authenticity of the of the moments is interesting because on on a surface level, your film is uh, the most one of the most constructed works that you could see like it's very the artifice is always formally I mean and that comes across in your writing the way you write because everything about the film is highly original and it plays with certain stereotypes of, of like narrative types <coughs> that you would expect and then it subverts them and that is everything yeah. from the character which is itself something that it's if you this 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 boy at this school and it's it, it position itself on a spectrum, but it's none of the usual types that you would imagine because it is the outcast in a sense, but it's also very confident mm -hmm. and comfortable in taking the entire um, human environment of the classroom um, by the throat. Um, and that, but also in this narrative structure, what you do with which you've talked about at length with the sudden breaks in a narrative thread and then yeah. you go yeah, somewhere else. So basically, this is all. It's, it's authentic, the result, I would say, it's completely authentic in the sense that emotionally it resonates tremendously. But like when you see it, this is the opposite of what you would, because normally you would associate naturalism with uh, authenticity. And that's, you come across, you come at this from the entirely opposite point of view, because you're, it, it feels very styled and, and constructed. Uh, so you go through, you, you get to the authenticity through this yeah. difficult path. I, I, yeah, I, I never, yeah, of course I, um, 
I'm interested in mood in filmmaking, mm -hmm. and I think that's probably the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, atmosphere, like we say in French, atmosphere. That's for me. It's what cinema is. When it when when you're being brought into a world that is a reflection of the world that we're living in, but not really the world where we mm -hmm. live in. Mm -hmm. And um, and sometimes you know, to the, in order to see beauty, for instance, for an example, in in, in life, you need a frame. And yeah. cinema is bringing that frame, and the frame becomes a, con like a construction yeah. sometimes. Um, but I. Um, but yes, I. Uh, but there's there's. It, it's very hard for me to define also what I'm doing because, it's. Um, I I would never define it as naturalism, of course, and uh, and I am um, certainly not social realism as well. It's really not that. But maybe I call it impressionistic. Yeah. Maybe that's that's the word because that that constructed elements with you know yeah. where the aesthetics also becomes. Um, a part of the um, of the, la the, the the film language is very, becomes very important. The way I shoot the scenes also where, where but I shoot the scene in I use a lot of long shots for instance. But this is in, in all my films and um, but the long shot allows the actors to be natural mm -hmm. and to I will never put a mark on the floor and we ask the actors to be uh, natural in front of and they have like something in front of them that is completely not natural. They have a, a crew of twenty five people. Yeah. Standing there, and you know, and um, so I, I'm very, I'm very concerned about that. And I, in terms of acting, I think I, I go for something extremely, uh, the tone of the r r normal life. Yeah. So in that sense, the acting is naturalistic. Yeah. That's what I look for. Um, but I, um, but yes, then, then it, then it, and then I realize that I'm. I'm, I'm playing also with uh, things that are very fictional, fiction, and also surprisingly, I'm always being told that oh, there's something that we can see that you're a documentarist also in your film. So there's that two these these two mm -hmm. things meeting in, sure. the, in the. It is kind of hybrid, also in the way I noticed that um, that like the actual moment between the emotional moment between two characters, especially, is always. It feels that, that, that there's this loose uh, element to it. All of your scenes, even the ones that are in, in a crowd, it feels like it's always about two people and, a, and, a, and an exchange. Like, I, I'm very interested in the way you use in this film the notion of a plurality of, of people and voices because it's always, it's always used to accentuate either the loneliness, like in these beautiful scenes when characters are just going through a party of, of people and the, the yeah. crowd are just the crowd they're never functionally every scene is it feels like a, a, a microcosm uh, and that's where you can feel the the constraints almost but then within that that microcosm mm -hmm. it feels very very loose and and, and real and spontaneous uh, I don't know if you have you seen uh, make to my love like a sheesh I just saw it uh, actually it's funny you mentioned it because I saw it two days ago. Okay. Yeah. What do you think? Because for me, uh, I've loved Make to My Love last year. And you could say, of course, there are some parallels in the things and just the what happens in the film. It's this sort of sentimental education of uh, young kids. Um, but it, it, And I think they get to the same... I think they're tremendously um, effective, both of them. But... <laughs> it, they go I think they're very different, though. But, very, oh, yeah, uh, but I understand what you mean. Uh, make, the, the power of Make to My Love, which is um, which is a film that was not even distributed in Canada, and yeah. uh, and, and and I think that people are um, outside the France are criticizing that film for some bad reasons. Um, um, but uh, but the thing is that with that film, what I found interesting is that there's you get the feeling that you're living a whole summer with yeah. the character. And uh, and at the end, you have this. Uh, sometimes you know you, you're putting in a, um, in a situation where the scenes are a bit you know long, and you're like okay, but 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 uh, it's captivating, and then you're being rewarded for the wait. Yeah. And um, and then 
And then the ending of uh, that film is actually very beautiful and very yeah. simple. And it, it, but you can also feel that like it's the end of the summer and maybe the beginning of a yeah. new uh, a, a love because yeah. because the but character is searching for love. Uh, that but almost feels so instinctual. Like it's a, for me the experience of McDo my love was <coughs> a, a, a trance. Like I was. Yeah. It's like you wake up and you. I don't know what quite what, yeah. what happened last night. And it's like I, I have the memory, the sensorial memory of what happened, but it's. Whoa! It's a shock. Well, our, with your film, it's in a way it's the opposite because you you feel you're being taken very meticulously and very deliberately through these moments, and and you have to adhere to what the film is telling you, but you 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 maintain a sort of agency, like you can see the twists and turns of how what it does to you and how it does it to you. Yeah. Whereas Mektub Malavi completely knocks you over the head, and then it sort of leaves you with this impression. Uh, and but I think like I, the funny thing is that they are, they they sort of touched on the same things for me, and they're both okay. incredible, uh, oh. even being so opposite. <laughs> um, so tell me, um, like uh, again, like in Make to My Love, you have this use of music. Um, you you could say that there's a repeated song that comes, um, sort of like. It sort of uh, celebrates uh, each scene. It comes at the end, and it's sort of like a commentary and an anthem almost. Uh, t tell me your use of music, how you do uh, it. Yeah, I have to say, I have to say that the music in the, in the films and uh, it, the, the music is very important in all my films. If, and if I do a film without music one day, I will be very surprised because <laughs> one of my greatest pleasure in life, and um, and I'm serious, it's. When it's when I uh, write and I, you know, of, of course I make this playlist, you know, when mm. it was like three years ago, it was on my computer, it's Genesis, you know, the Genesis oh, playlist. Okay. And then I put a lot of songs and uh, actually it's a long playlist, but then may maybe, you know, 10% of it is, ends up in the film. So this is when and you're still writing. Yeah, the and then, and then you imagine a, a, a scene. Okay. Or uh, and then you're uh, and then you're you're shooting the film and then you're in the editing suite and then when you put the song and it works and there's you get goosebumps from something that you've been you know expecting three years ago and it, it's actually working. This is one of the greatest joy I can get yeah. you know uh, in 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 my life. It, but it's, it's it's seriously yeah. not just it, not just in terms of filmmaking. It's it's a great uh, it's a great 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 feeling. That's why I like editing so much. Yeah. And then sometimes you need to mourn it because you cannot get the song. Yeah, because it's that's why expensive. it's so risky when, when you do that and you're just casually you're on your computer, you're putting songs into playlists. But know. we were lucky enough to get the, yeah. the main song that I wanted yeah. for the film, and then I, um, I was I think I, I think I was thinking at the beginning of putting um, "Take My Breath Away," mm. you know, oh, okay. from Top Gun. Yeah, and they're very yeah. similar. Actually, but very similar, but one yeah. is so <laughs> there's so much meaning attached to that. I don't know. Maybe it would have been jarring. Yeah. And then and then I and then uh, and then I discovered that song from a band in Montreal, like yeah. Rancid and Tops, and and it was like it was that certain sort of mood between you know the the Giorgio Moroder uh, mm -hmm. mood and uh, like uh, nothing. There's something of nothing compares to you also. Yeah. You know. By, by Prince, but but sing by uh, Shandell Connor, and so but 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 then I'll yeah. So the music is, um, but but in it, that film also I think it was even more relevant because when you're young and you're a teenager and you're experience you know uh, love feelings as with such a strong um, impulse uh, for the first time, we all have uh, we all built uh, somewhere. Um, during my time in the '90s, it was on uh, tapes, yeah. you know. But uh, <laughs> but uh, when I yeah yeah when I was like very you know it was tapes. But but then but then we 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 all have the soundtrack. We build the soundtrack of our lives, you yeah. know, on these tapes or on the C on the on the CDs later, you know, yeah. and uh, now on the play on the playlist. So and then the, that becomes like. The music becomes so important because you attach so much what's going on with your life with it, mm -hmm. and um, and when it's a bit melancholic music, uh, it's like putting a little bit of salt on your little scar. <laughs> you're on your open scar, and yeah. then you you realize also we also do that as teenagers, you know. 
yeah. sometimes we like to suffer a bit in terms of sure. it's it's not fun but yeah. it's like <laughs> yeah. oh then you listen to you go home and then you listen to yeah. radiohead and then they, oh yeah. <laughs> and, and it, it's funny because this in i'm a freak film, you know <laughs> 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 That's really like putting salt on yeah, your wound. Yeah, but it's always your wounds, and and, and yeah. like in this film, the the conflict, which is another um, highly um, original and unusual way, is that the the conflict always feels it, it's coming not from where you would expect it to come from. So and it's always internal, and it it changes the balance of the scene because it's um, it's always so fresh. Um, and, and it's got a lot to do with sexuality and people defining and discovering their own sexuality. This is a, a story of two parallel um, yeah. journeys through explorations of, of their it's, own. It, it's, it's, of course, the main... Uh, it, it, it was the same with, uh, you know, with uh, my first film, The Demons, because I, um, I, um, I was showing the film in uh, different festivals as well, and then uh, at some point one friend uh, of mine saw the film, I think it was in Gothenburg, and... Um, I thought of it for the first time, and he said, uh, why are you saying it's a film about children's fears? It's a film about sexuality and the awakening of it and the fear related to it. And I thought he was putting something that, that was, like, absolutely true. That was the angle. Mm -hmm. That was completely, that was completely sure. the subject. And in that film, it's, it's, it's the same in terms of... I, I'm fascinated by the. I don't. I don't believe that uh, sexuality is something that is uh, stable in the life. You know, it's something that is always in movement. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm. I'm not desiring the same um, persons right now than I was when I was that age. And uh, it's it's constantly evolving. And I remember that when I was a teenage boy, um, I was asking a lot of questions about it. And 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 I I felt also that we were. I was going in uh, all boys school also, mm -hmm. where we were being told, you know, very at a very early stage, um, we were we were put in a, a, a gender stereotype at that very very early stage because it could it was a kind of conservative, um, you know, private school. It used to be run by the Jesuits, but it was secular when I was there. But there was this, you know, still fathers some, sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. But but they were nice, you know. <laughs> if you can, they were there was no uh, the, the, the weird stuff was coming from the secular teachers, not yeah, from the as, fathers again. when I was there. But uh, there was of course stories. But but um, but uh, but I yeah. So I um, I lost my uh, track. <laughs> Let's go back because this is interesting. Because in this, this is another of the narrative cliches that you play with in the oh, film, the because idea. the structure of this old boy uh, boarding school is felt. Like, you, if when you are put in that context, you immediately expect in films for that to um, come into, uh, into the conflict of the film by resisting the character who's uh, grappling with his own sexuality in terms of uh, yeah. his developing his, his feelings for yeah. another boy in a world that expects him to like girls and whatever. But then at the same time, you have this joyful, transcendent moment when he decides to just, you know, get up and, and confess his love. Uh, and then you feel the that. support. Yes, which is, again, normally you would think the conflict here is that the, the environment around him is resisting to that. But then it's not. And in a way, it kind of deflates the whole moment. Yeah. You're kind of... Um, acting against the character there because you, you, this is his grand stand and you take away the support that you would normally uh, dramatically uh, feel but then it comes back because even then it comes in, back. That, in that moment yeah. it's triumphant yeah. but then it's slowly through, it's but through awkwardness like yeah. it's not okay this is obviously after a confession like that I know what the reaction of the classroom in, in the reverse shot is going to be and, and it's going to be <coughs> big issue but it's not it's a it's applause and, and, yeah. and cheering but then slowly it creeps back in in the in subsequent yeah, scenes which I think is realistic yeah especially in that scene where yeah of course but uh, because there's something out of frame that we can understand and yeah. they get another side of the story yeah. the boys and then they are taking side yeah which is you know they're they're, they're it's it's wolf pack kind yeah. of uh, ideology that uh, wins at the end, you know. Yeah. Identify myself as much as to the 
to the male characters as to uh, Charlotte mm -hmm. because she's in a, a period where it's a tough story in a way but there's something there that I seen there's, there's patterns there that I've seen so much um, uh, around me and uh, and of course, I can identify myself because um, of the moment where you know you're kind of looking for love, and then you're you're disappointed very much, and then you're and then you you feel there's a new hope, and then you're willing to go straight forward, and then you get disappointed again, yeah. and then I don't know the person calls you and okay. says let's meet up at uh, eight o'clock tonight, and at seven thirty the person calls I'm not gonna be there. I have something else, yeah, and then you're like, ah, and then it's so hurtful, and then the the next day you're supposed to see the person. You, on the way to the date, you're forgiving all the pain that you experienced by being disappointed, you know, yeah, so many times, and that's the, maybe there's no age for that, but especially when you're young, this is like ah, this is, and I and, and we have we've all experienced that definitely. But but on the other hand, I there was something with Charlotte's character that I um, I'm very critical of, uh, and it's also an autocritic. Um, I'm very critical of the way, uh, in general, it's maybe we are conditioned to do that. But I feel that um, I'm, I'm critical of um, men in relationships in general with uh, with with women, and 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 there's something when you're young that. Uh, we want to also to you know to fit into the st a certain kind of yeah. stereotypes, and I think that um, I don't want to judge my characters, but I think that the, the men around her are not are kind of not letting her being free. That they're kind of the first boyfriend. If she's not interested in in his in his interest, he's not interested in her. Yeah. And then she meets somebody else who's not giving her any space at all. You know, and it, it drags. Down, you know, um, or in a way, and um, and it's something that I've seen and I've experienced, and I've also, you know, asked myself sometimes if I was not like also like putting down, you know, some yeah. people during some past relationships, and um, so so yes, it's a kind of it's 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 very tough. It's um, but it's um, but I see her as uh, being strong enough to. It's a tough uh, education sentimental in, right. in that part, totally. But I think that a lot of a lot of it, 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 a lot of young people go through that. But I think it's especially a bit harsher when you're a young woman, and I experience that because of that thing that I see in relationships sometimes that I think we are terrible, mm -hmm. you know, terrible. You saw the actress in Ava, is is that right? Yeah, and then you you. You were struck. Yeah, we that. were. We were. Uh, she's French, so that was not uh, expected. <laughs> uh, were you looking? Were you looking ideally to keep this within Quebecois young actors, or? Yeah, but I, I, I can't. You know, I, I had to change two lines in the script to make it uh, work. So there's like a re reconstructed family, yeah. and there's okay. a lot of you know. French people living in Montreal mm -hmm. right now. It also shows the reality of what Montreal is right now. Mm -hmm. And um, but um, yeah, for me, it was just to find the proper person, and I found somebody in Montreal. And then uh, two weeks after, before the, we started shooting, the person uh, decided that she uh, she uh, she couldn't do it. And uh, so I was like, I had a feeling that I've seen all the actresses of that age. Mm -hmm. um, so I was a bit desperate, and um, and then uh, my producer saw Ava in uh, Cannes. He just came back from Cannes. We were shooting in one week, and oh, then wow. uh, I, oh, I, and then I realized that oh my God, the Kino Wish is like a quite amazing uh, presence, and uh, and then um, and then I would send her the script, and she uh, she took a flight, and then she she came, and uh, it was it was very nice, and she had a lot of offers also at that moment, so she was picky, and I was. Flattered, thing, flattered yeah. that, uh, that that she was like feeling something for the part, and she could really see these things in Charlotte also that she experienced, and so there was something very personal also with mm -hmm. uh, with the character that she she felt that she was ready to struggle with and to uh, confront, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, 
so that was like a, a, a fantastic coincidence. And of course, uh, I think she's, um, she's always right. You know, she's always, uh, she's very good. She's very mm -hmm. good. Yeah.